What's up guys, Justin here from Poorly Reviewed Beer, back for the fourth and final installment of my Christmas beer review series. I have two more beers to check out, and then uh, having done eight beers total, I'm not going to do rankings that could get a, a little tedious, I feel, but I will give three or four top picks uh, of the beers that I enjoyed most during this series. And I think that's good, because I don't think anything I've had has been uh, really bad at, at, at all, so... Uh, Glad to not give anything a uh, an eighth place. Uh, so yeah, as I said, just some uh, top picks. But before we get to that, let's try a couple more beers. Starting with Ten Barrel Brewing Company in Bend, Oregon, and their Pray for Snow Winter Ale. Uh, Ten Barrel seems to have just hit the Columbia area fairly recently, uh, unless I missed some news. I don't know if they joined uh, one of the one of the big beer companies that they're getting out here, or if they just uh, were able to expand their uh, expand their distribution cross country. Hopefully, it's the latter. And uh, regardless, I wish them well. Uh, what they have to say about this uh, pray for snow? Pray for snow was built to keep you warm in those cold winter months. The malt is rich in flavor with notes of molasses, dark caramel, spice, and raisin. The hop complements of the malt are English East Coast Goldings, which brings in an herbal spiciness. 7.5% ABV, 75 IBU. So we'll kind of see where this uh, compares to the other couple of hoppy bitter beers we had in this series with the IBU level of 75. Uh, pretty much crystal clear. Nice uh, red color going towards an orange copper as I hold it up to the light. And a, a, a very light tan head and just about a, a finger's worth is all. Uh, pretty beer, though. Very pretty beer. Uh, let's get to it. An interesting hop malt mix. I'm getting getting lots of both. I don't know if I would quite call it balanced. I had a beer this weekend, and I haven't written about it yet. It's uh, the one I still need to write about. That push that it had a, a good hop presence as well as a good malt presence and um, I had this beer and it, it just it didn't blend well there was kind of the, the the malty side was doing its thing and the hoppy side was doing its thing but there was no no blend no harmony nothing like that and this is kind of similar A uh, fair amount of sweetness up front, and then, hmm, I was getting it for a while, and the aftertaste, and it's just kind of a a super bitter burnt note, I think. Uh, hmm. Yeah, nice little sweetness up front, and um, kind of, again, some of the stuff they're talking about, dark Dark sugary notes, a little bit of dark fruit. Can certainly get the raisin. And 7.5% um, ABV, I'm getting a, a little, just a slight, slight hit of booziness. Certainly nothing overpowering by far, um, but it is just very slightly there. But The back end is just kind of almost burned out something super bitter about it. Um, unfortunately, really quite off-putting. Um, yeah. The front is just really nice. Um, again, kind of, I'm kind of getting more bit of a, a raisin bread, fruitcake, Kind of a note now that's actually kind of right at the intersection before it turns into the 
the burnt charred mess. So it's almost like there's a, a um, an over toasted malt thing going on where the, the toasted malts became just plain burned malts <laughs> somehow. But um, lots of potential for this beer. As I said, the front half of it's very nice, but the back of the half of it, uh, unfortunately, uh, is a mess. So um, I think it's just best to move on to the next beer. Okay, I cleared out the palate a little bit. I'm ready to move on to the next beer. And that is Bell's Brewery in Comstock, Michigan. And their Winter White Ale, Belgian-inspired wheat ale. Very nice little snow scene on the bottle art there. From the brewery. An alternative to dark and heavy winter warmers and stouts, Winter White is a stylish and refreshing wheat ale. Fermented with a Belgian ale yeast, this blend of barley and wheat malts yields a mixture of clove and fruity aromas, all without the use of any spices. Deliberately brewed to, mean, to retain a cloudy appearance, Winter White is a beer for embracing winter. 5% ABV. So obviously this will be something a little bit different from what we've had so far. We've had a handful of the winter warmer types and a couple of hop forward beers. But certainly nothing in this kind of category. We'll see if it's just a, a variation on Oberon or if it really has something uh, to offer for the winter. Looking at it, not much head to it. I may have poured it a little bit on the gentle side. I think just because I was talking. Uh, so just a little bit ahead and um, the, the ring around the edge is thicker than what's actually on the, the surface. I can almost look into the beer from top. Uh, color is a, kind of a little bit more yellow than straw. Uh, somewhat hazy. I can see plenty of particulate matter in the beer itself, though I can also see my fingers a little bit uh, through the other side of the glass. Get a nice look at it. Kind of a, a uh, kind of a concentrated lemonade color. Almost had something another another descriptor that was a little bit off color. So but, uh, we'll go with concentrated lemonade. Let's uh, go ahead and try it out. Tastes like wheat, smells like wheat. Uh, plenty of cloves, uh, especially in the aroma. Whole, whole lot of grains, whole, whole lot of grains. Uh, wheat, I would say corn. Maybe just a, a, a dash of citrus, and um, certainly not anything sour, so I would say more like an orange uh, than anything else. Not not grapefruit, not lemon, um, orange if anything. <laughs> Has a... Uh, Has a pretty heavy mouthfeel or heavy, pretty heavy body. Uh, just kind of a bit of a, a hefty Oberon, uh, frankly. Maybe the uh, the flavors are just a, a little bit muted compared to Oberon, and I don't know if you want anything super bright um, or anything with these kind of flavors. I don't think you want anything. Bold, you know, I don't think you want bold cloves or bold banana or anything like that pushing through. So, um, uh, tasty little beer. I don't think it's the the best thing Bell's has ever made, and I wouldn't call this a disappointment. I don't know if Bell's has ever disappointed me, but this is probably the one I've liked the least of any of their beers, and I've had a good number of them. Oh uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, cloves and spices, wheat and corn. Uh, good but not great offering from Bell's. Their uh, winter white ale.
So now over the last eight days, I have tried eight different holiday beers. And um, just some kind of my, uh, my best of the bunch. And I'm going to read these. I have them in order that I uh, reviewed them. So this isn't a... Uh, Really, a first, second, third. I just, I'll just read them in the order that uh, that I reviewed them. Um, none of the ones from today, sadly. But uh, my first one up uh, was uh, Rogue Ales, Santa's Private Reserve. Uh, just really evoked the memory of a Christmas tree or a Christmas wreath, which I think was just a really great thing for this beer. Uh, it was a, more of a, a hoppy beer than uh, most of what we had, but um, it had spruce notes and just generally kind of tasted like wood. Or had had uh, evoked feelings of wood, and so again, that, that Christmas tree, Christmas wreath feel was just really something that sold me on that beer. Uh, a little bit of roast, plenty of hops, and a little bit of malt at the very end. But again, it just it felt like drinking Christmas. That's uh, that was really what it came down to for that beer. Uh, next up, the Avery Old Jubil Old Jubilation. Uh, just a lot of tasty things going on. Dark fruit. Some toffee, some caramel, uh, but there was a nice little uh, a b bready, biscuity malt note going on that blended with those uh, those sweet notes pretty well. So I got some like some chocolate scone or chocolate croissant notes and like a, a berry scone uh, note as well. They just the the flavors really blended together well, and the malt and uh, some of the other flavors really just everything came together really well, and I think made for a really really great beer. Um, creamy mouthfeel, not overly sweet, which, again, is great for me. A little bit boozy on the back end. Most of these beers have been on the, the higher side of the ABV spectrum, so uh, not surprising there. And then finally, the uh, the St. Bernardus Christmas Ale. Uh, just really, a, really an amazing beer. I spent all of Sunday night, afternoon and Sunday night drinking it. Um, just lots of fruity red wine aromas. Just... Uh, sweet, dark fruit, a little bit boozy. Um, got some plums. Not really anything on the, the chocolate or caramel side. Um, what I like is was the flavors were kind of on the subtle side, but also very uh, um, very strong flavors. But they, they just weren't overwhelming, I think, as could have so easily happened in, a, in an Abbey Ale, a Belgian-style ale, uh, like that Christmas Ale is from St. Bernardus. Uh, just really... Really, almost perfectly executed in terms of a uh, a flavor execution, and especially in terms of how bold or how gentle you want those flavors to be, and everything was just really delicious. Um, so that was the Saint Bernardus Christmas Ale. Um, if I had to give a couple of honorable mentions, just the Course and Donk Christmas Ale and the Sierra Nevada Celebration uh, Fresh Hop IPA, two very different beers, but uh, um, still very good. So that is it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. You can find all of my reviews, video, and written, along with news, commentary, and more, at PoorlyReviewedBeer.com. Also find me on Twitter and Facebook. Those links will be in the description below. You can also find me on the mobile apps Untapped and Instagram under the username Poorly Reviewed Beer. And of course that's spelled P-O-U-R-L-Y Reviewed Beer. And if you are so inclined, like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for checking out the entire Christmas series. I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.